in the next few videos, we're going to conduct a quick tour of the Retopo tools in 3D Coat. Now, as I mentioned in the UV tutorial, 3D Coat has a mirrored set of UV tools to either create or edit UVs on a Retopo mesh residing here in the Retopo workspace. Since we already covered these tools in that video, we won't go back over them here. And let's go ahead and get started now by going to the Strokes tool at the very top in the Add Geometry section. This is a good tool to use as a starting point. We can use auto retopology, but we will not focus on that in this video. But the strokes tool is somewhat of an auto retopology routine all on its own. What I mean by that is you can create strokes and 3D Coat will generate a mesh from it. This includes the ability to create slice loops to generate a mesh that wraps all the way around the model. To create a slice loop, you start by clicking outside the object on one end and finish outside the object on the other side. So I'll undo one time. If you happen to have a shell or you have some degree of thickness, it will create a line on the inside as well. It makes it very easy to read apologize things like barrels or cylinders, things of that sort. Okay, and let's Create one here. If I want, I can hold down the shift key and it will constrain it in 90 degree increments. Let me undo. So yeah, let's go ahead and create a loop there. That looks good. And I'll create one more. There. There. Maybe one more here. Okay. Now, with all these loops created, we can create a single cross section. I can just brush to create that. And now, what 3D Coat is going to do is it's going to use this number of segments here. These will be the number of rings and it's going to create an entire mesh using these loops. So let's hit the enter key and that tells 3D Coat to go ahead and generate the mesh. So we had a slight problem here. So I'm going to undo that and I am going to crank up the spline points density because sometimes along the stroke it may dip beneath the surface and that can create problems Okay, so let's do it again. Let's see if we get a better result. There we go. Probably doesn't help that we have such an irregular shape on the back side, but that's fine. These will not be seen, so I can use the select tool, go into faces mode, I'm going to reduce my brush size by using my bracket keys like I would in Photoshop. Just paint select. It's additive, so I don't have to hold down the shift key or anything. It'll just continue adding as I brush. If I want to deselect, I can hold down the control key. And I'll hit the delete key. All right. Now with the strokes tool, I can continue building. But one thing that's nice about it is once you've already created your mesh, you still have the ability to tweak points. You can hover over a point, right click and drag to quickly tweak the placement of your points on the fly. We can also change the opacity so we can see through a little bit better. Sometimes you may not want that. You may want it to be a little bit more opaque. All right. And let's say we wanted to create a loop right here 
to support this row of edges, but also maybe create another one here for this outer rim. So let's go to split rings and I'll click that. You'll notice how 3D Coat automatically snaps it to the surface and you have a couple different options for snapping. Now let's choose slide edges. I could slide a single edge, but more often than not, you want to slide an entire edge loop. Hold down the control key. And you can do just that. Control key again. Let's bring that up here. Split rings. Let's use the move tool and this allows you to move individual sub objects such as faces, edges, vertices, edge loops, or edge rings. So let's choose vertices. We can choose auto mode and that way when we hover over a sub object we can move just that. I may want to move just this entire edge. There we go. So let's continue using the strokes tool. Right click and drag. Now we looked at one way that we can create an entire mesh by using the loops, but this allows you to sketch on the surface and it will generate a mesh that way as well. So you can hover over an already existing vertice and it will start there. It will snap from that point. Same thing here. You want to be careful about the spline points density when you're using this particular method because if you need to go back and edit the shape, having too many points obviously is going to give you more work than is necessary. So we'll go ahead and create our mesh here, but then we'll reduce it thereafter. So let's create some cross-secting lines. And wherever there is an intersection of lines like this, then 3D Coat will see that as a command to create a polygon. So if I hit enter, it's only going to create polygons here, but not up here. So what I need to do is go ahead and create a line here, and then we'll create the polygons. So I'm going to also start up here and you'll notice how it snaps when I come to this point. All right, let's go ahead and hit enter. And you see how 3D Coat generates an entire mesh just from those strokes. All right, so let's look at the add and split tool. And if we want, we can create something from scratch. We don't necessarily have to already have geometry for this. So what I would want to do is just click my first point and just continue clicking and then come back to the first point to create an entire polygon. Just as with the strokes tool, you can tweak the individual elements when you hover over them. So right click and drag to tweak the position of this edge. And one nice thing about it is if you want to weld, you can also use this technique. Same thing with the strokes tool. Just right click and drag, bring it over the top of another point. And now it's welded. I'll undo. The move tool operates the same way. It has a welding function built in. So when you click and hover over a point and drag it over the top of another, boom, it welds it automatically. So let's go back to add and split tool. So now that we have this created, I can zoom in and continue building off of it. So I'll click that point, just continue clicking.
So if I want to quickly fill this in, you only have to click these two points. Click and click. Same thing here. Very easy. Let me select this. Go to delete polygons. So if you find yourself with a hole like this, you can quickly fill it now by holding the shift key and hovering till you see a preview of what you want. So I'll click and it fills the gap with a polygon. I'll now stop the video here and we'll pick up in the next one starting with the quads tool. So stay tuned and we'll see you then.